return of the conquering hero. That's how SNP supporters saw it when Nicola Sturgeon toured Edinburgh today. For decades, the SNP has struggled to make themselves relevant to Westminster elections. Last night, their leader was in the Manchester studio with the two men who have a chance of getting into number 10. We really need to break the old boys' network at Westminster because, frankly, none of these guys can be trusted when it comes to tuition fees. Buxton, just outside Manchester, in the marginal seat of High Peak. Were they watching here? I watched every second of it. I found it riveting. Um, it obviously shows the new colours of British politics, um, not just the toing and froing the table tennis match that it used to be. Um, I think you're pleased about that? Very much so, yeah. I thought Nicola Sturgeon was very good. Um, I think the, the winners were the women. It creates stigma to people who are ill, and I think you no, would be ashamed of yourself. Well, I'm sorry, we've got to put our own people first. Both nationalist leaders and the Green Party leader attacked Nigel Farage. Ed Miliband reserved his fire for David Cameron. Use your vote at this election as a weapon to fight for the future of our National Health Service, because it needs to be rescued from you, David. What about mid -staffs? Because... I've got to say, over, over 13 years, the Labour government transformed an NHS. Labour said they felt Ed Miliband's personal ratings would now rise again. To celebrate, he took his family campaigning in Blackpool. Do you happen to watch the politicians on the um, telly last night? About half an hour of it. That's, and, that's all. And then? And then I was reading the paper and sort of playing on Facebook and... I still don't know who to vote for. Might it be for one of the smaller parties? Possibly. I would say gearing towards one of the smaller ones. Particularly after watching last night? Yes. David Cameron's master plan always was that the bickering and cacophony amongst the other six leaders would give him a moment to gesture at them and say, do you want that chaos or do you want me? It never quite turned out like that. Nonetheless, he did make one rehearsed gesture down the line and you could tell from the reaction of his own team afterwards that's the moment they want seared in your memory. What I'm hearing is more debt and more taxes, more debt and more taxes, a lot more debt and more taxes, some ask more debt and more taxes, question and David definitely Cameron. more debt and more taxes. I, I, I think one of the moments of the debate was when David went down the panel and said, debt and taxes, debt and taxes. More debt or more taxes. Because that frames the election debate. Got the message? The day after the debate was dominated by talk of who would be shaking on deals with whom, the other side of the election. The Tories talked up the danger of the SNP getting close to power. Labour warned of UKIP doing the same. The smaller parties rejoiced in the prospect of power being shared more widely. I actually think most people watching last night will have realised that no one's going to win this election outright, so it's all about who's going to work with whom. Well, I think the next government is unlikely to be made up of a coalition of two. It'll probably need three, looking at the arithmetic. So uh, after all these combative battles that have taken place in these debates, uh, there's going to have to be a calming of the waters after May the 7th. Away from the confusing mess of who won the debate polls, another very interesting conventional poll emerged last night. It suggested that the Tories had climbed back up to 37%, Labour back up to 35%. The whole narrative of last night's debate, the imagery of the debate, suggested we were looking at the demise of two-party dominance in British politics. This poll suggests that rumours of its death, in England at least, may be exaggerated. Gary Gibbon, Channel 4 News, in Buxton.